So in this lesson, we're gonna be harvesting what we expect to be 100 pounds of Meyer lemons. We're also gonna to have to deal with storage solutions so that we can enjoy Meyer lemons through all of winter, spring, and even in the summer as we've been doing for several consecutive years. And then we're gonna be dealing with post-harvest mm -hmm. care of these Meyer lemons as there's a big difference with pruning your citrus trees in early winter versus late winter. It's almost analogous to going into surgery knowing you're not gonna heal for several months compared to going into surgery knowing that healing will begin almost immediately. This is part two of a three-part citrus care lesson. We just did our lemon tasting taste test with my children, Isabel and Victoria, where we sampled the varieties of lemons, including the Meyer, the Eureka, and the Ponderosa lemon. Be sure to check out that part one of three lesson that'll be posted just below this video in the video description below. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants and author saving the world with the home garden. And right now we're harvesting the lemons off of these Meyer lemons that are grafted on a standard rootstock. As you can see, I'm six feet tall and these lemons have been pruned to only about five feet. And we're gonna talk about post-harvest care, which is gonna include pruning these trees, which we're gonna be doing together momentarily. I just wanna see how many lemons we've picked on just one side here. And let's take a look at the weight as well. If we pull out the scale here, we can see that we've already got, check that out if you go right over the top, 60.6 pounds of lemons. And we've still got at least another box, if not two more boxes to go. So check out all the lemons we have yet to go that are still on the Meyer lemon tree. When we're harvesting our lemons, a quick tip I'm sharing with you that I've already taught my girls, Isabel Victoria, is that when you prune, if I can get the sleep out of the way, you're gonna wanna make sure you prune right above the lemon and include some of the stem. That's gonna allow the lemon to last a lot longer on your counters until you can get to them. This here will help the lemon stay for at least about a week, up to three weeks on your counter. Compared to if you simply pull on the lemon, what ends up happening is you end up damaging the top of the lemon and this immediately contributes towards rot and shortens the life of the lemon on your counter. So be sure to include some of the stem and the lemons will last a lot longer in your house. And now just check out all of these lemons. These are three lemons on standard rootstocks that have been pruned and contained to about five feet. And the Meyer lemons compared to Eureka's and Ponderosa's and even Lisbon lemons are a lot more compact and dense growing compared to the more upright structure you'd experience with a Eureka lemon. So my helpers, Isabel and Victoria, just helped us harvest from our three on standard rootstock Meyer lemons. We've got three and a half boxes of fruit. And now let's weigh them and see what are what I anticipate to be record harvest for the 2021 winter season. After harvesting your lemons, the next goal is to now care for your lemons. They've given you so much and they've spent so much of their resources, the minerals and nutrients that went into the creation of all of those nutrient dense fruit. So the goal is now going to be to improve the health of the plant. So when pruning, here we are now in early December, our chance of frost date here in this part of Los Angeles is the last week of January. So the ideal time to be pruning is going to be late January to early February because shortly thereafter is when the plant goes into maximum bloom. And those are the blooms that result in the maximum, maximum fruit set and ultimately the yields of the fruit you're gonna be harvesting off your plants. So consider the timing of your pruning to be in line with that being later in winter so that as soon as you prune, the wound's gonna begin to heal but I'm going to be demonstrating some pruning techniques even though it's not the ideal time. And even though there's some blooms and some flowers on the plant, just bear in mind that after your last chance of frost date passes, it's quickly thereafter that the plant's gonna go into the maximum bloom phase. 
Also, I was looking at the history of when we first planted these Meyer lemons that are behind me, which was in 2018. You can check out this video that was um, demonstrated by Isabel, my oldest daughter in 2018, where she rounded these plants, and you can see how small they were just then. Hi, I'm Isabel Rose, the little red gardener. Let me show you my backyard. Welcome to my garden. Look at these beautiful lemons. And keep in mind that all of the plants were whitewashed with the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard protection against damaging summer sunburn and in the winter sun scald as well as insects and rodents. That is that white paint that you can see on your plants that's also available in colors brown and green and gray and grayish for a more natural appearance on your plants. Now we're back on the other side of the Meyer lemon. Again, this is a sweet variety of lemon. It's on a standard rootstock. And as you can see here, I'm six feet tall and these plants are kind of pruned closer to about five feet. This is about a four to five year old tree. And we've been able to successfully manage it to about five feet in height after all of these years. And together after our post harvest in lesson number two, we're going to be also pruning the Meyer lemon as well. Let me show you what this looks like compared to our Eureka lemon that's just behind you. So this here is my semi-standard. So this should be smaller, but the Eureka lemon is such a vigorous lemon Check out how tall it is. And this is with pruning. Um, and again, post harvest, we're gonna be pruning the Eureka lemon. And this one I consider to be more of a year round lemon tree compared to the Myers that do offer lemons throughout the year, but they do peak in the winter months with the harvest that we're gonna be picking up today compared to the Eurekas that we're picking virtually every single week throughout the entire year, as you can see, with the larger, these lemons are just about ready to ripen. And then these that are still about two to three months away from ripening. And then there's plus blooms that are happening within the tree. The third lemon we're featuring in today's lemon tasting is the Ponderosa lemon. And this is known as being one of the largest, gigantic lemon varieties. As you can see here, this one just fell off this lemon bush that is on a dwarf rootstock and as you can see again the lemon is huge and i'm going to put these side by side compared to the other ones but they can even get twice as big as this the next thing we did when it comes to plant care is we fertilized the plants and we fertilized them with the ivory organics all-purpose fertilizers there's the premium blend which has the lower npk and then there's the super blend which has a little higher npk but also includes azomite and azomite comes from volcanic deposits which are high in micronutrients and together the ivory organic both super and premium blend fertilizers offer your plants all of the plant macronutrients which are npk which most fertilizers have but ivory organics is unique in the fact that it also includes magnesium sulfur and calcium giving your plants all six macronutrients something you won't find in most fertilizer products and additionally the super blend has that added plus ingredient being azomite Ivory Organic is also happy to share that it also now includes the tea bags, which is ideal for your foliar nutritional feeding, which you can do throughout the year, but most importantly in the winter months, when the root uptake of nutrients is poor, you can spray the leaves, turning your yellow plants green, and also making sure your plants have all of the nutrients necessary for optimal blooms come spring. So I'm standing alongside now my three Meyer lemons on standard rootstock, and I'm gonna demonstrate pruning. And of all the fruit trees that we have on our property, the citrus in general are one of the easiest to prune as they really don't require much pruning at all. What is number one is to keep in mind what is the design and structure of the tree. And in this case, it's more of a round structure canopy with an umbrella shape to protect the underlying tree trunk from the risk of damaging summer sunburn, as well as in the winter, it offers also protection from sun scald as it's not allowing the sun to really penetrate much and expose what I call the heart of the tree, which is the tree trunk and lower branches of the plant. Compared to if we reverse positions over here, behind me now is my Eureka lemon. And the Eureka lemon has more of an upright position structure. As you can see, the branches are going straight up. And the goal is really to prune off the top to help encourage the lower branches to remain vigorous and growing and, and flowering and ultimately fruitful. So this is the Eureka and the principles that we discussed with this plant will also apply to the Meyer lemon if we can now return back to this position.
In a lesson that I also demonstrated about a year or two ago, we talked about the structure of this particular tree being it's in an area that is about only two feet wide. It's on a raised wall. So it's kind of has the principles of being in ground in addition to being um, in a container. So it's, I kind of feel like the care for this particular trees are of a blend between in ground and in container again, because it's on a raised wall. The first step is making sure you contain your tree. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna simply take these branches that have now, that were once loaded with fruit. And even though there's a little baby one, there's gonna be some loss in trying to now regain the control and the shape of the structure of the plant on your property. So what we're gonna do is bring these branches back into the grow zone, which is again, only about two feet wide. So we're gonna pull this branch in and if you can come back, you can see that when I'm pulling this in, there's still a lot of branches surrounding this particular grow zone as I take this out. And what I'm doing is where this branch comes out, I'm pruning about a quarter inch away from that stem and that'll come out like so. And that's real time. I just pruned one tree of these three trees back. I'll continue this same principle going in. The second lesson I wanna share is the same thing as we've discussed with roses, which the goal is to create this open vase shaped structure where it's tighter near the bottom and more open near the top. This next issue is more of a Meyer lemon concern where the growth, instead of it being vase shaped and upright, will end up actually quite frequently growing into itself crowding and increasing the humidity and increasing the risk of disease and pests within the plant compared to if it had a more open vase shaped structure, which is the healthiest alternative since it allows more light in and also the movement of air. And that actually helps suppress and minimize the risk of disease and other problems within the plant. So what we're gonna do is now take these branches that are growing, here is the center of the plant where I'm pointing and the goal is to now take these branches that are growing into the center and just pulling them and pruning them back. And notice that when I'm pruning, before I prune, if the center is where these pruners are, the goal is now to also keep your eye on these leaves. This is a minor technicality, but it'll have actually major future results, is you're gonna wanna prune wherever you see the bud of the node pointing away from the center and that'll actually encourage the growth to push out from where those leaf nodes are and grow away from the center compared to if i prune on this side and then what would happen is that the branching would come out of this leaf node and grow right back into the center of the plant so what we're going to do is we're going to prune in this fashion right here and encourage the growth to come out of the leaf node and away from the heart of the tree. One thing to be mindful of when you're doing this pruning is to see if there's, when the sun's out, if there's extra light hours on the tree trunk and lower branches, which again may need that extra protection of either the three-in-one plant guard or whitewash formula, which is an organic way to protect the tree from the risk of first, second, and third degree sunburns. So step one is to wash your lemons. So the next step is cut your lemons in half. Smells delicious. We're just gonna add it to our juice press, just like so. All of this will now go into our compost pile. So nothing actually gets wasted. So now that we've completed this side of the sink, we still got these more to wash and prepare and squeeze and creating the juice that'll then fill up the beverage dispenser, as you can see how that works. This is 100% pure Meyer lemon juice. What we're gonna do now is Fill up these ice cube trays.
So in a few hours, we'll be coming back to empty out the frozen Meyer lemon cubes and filling up the Ziploc freezer bags and storing them. And that will last us through the rest of winter, going into spring and even summer. And just check out again, the 110 pounds of Meyer lemons that we harvested from our garden. And we'll be using these lemons for salad dressings in addition to summer drinks for the next three seasons. If you can't get to squeezing all of this juice within a week period of time, then I recommend that you keep the fruit on the tree as they will last significantly longer than if you pick them. Once you pick them, it is a rush to squeeze them and find a way to store them as well. And one last helpful tip is a lot of people will also freeze the entire lemon if the goal is using it for lemon zest, which you can use for cakes and so much more. So if you've enjoyed this educational lesson brought to you by Every Gangs, be sure to give us that thumbs up and most importantly, share us with your gardening friends and family. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all Happy Gardening. Happy Gardening.